Hi, I'm Marisa. Welcome to my piano studio. I'll be giving a short lesson on what a chord inversion is. First, let's discuss a chord. It is a structure that's made of three notes. So in a C chord, for instance, we have C, E, and G. Depending on which note is placed on bottom or is the lowest tone, you can make three different arrangements of a chord. Let's take a look at the sheet music. This is what the C chord inversion looks like on paper on the staff. So here we have the root position C chord in um, right hand, left hand, treble clef, bass clef. So we have um, the three notes, uh, C on bottom, E in the middle, G on top. And the I don't know if you can see it, but the little tiny letters and numbers next to them are the note names and the fingering. So it's, it's what we just went over together in the lesson. Um, but just written out in chart form for easy reference. And so in the left hand here, the C is played with finger five, the E with three, the G with one. In the right hand, middle C one, E three, G five. Here we have the chord inverted for the first time. So the C's are put on top and the E is on bottom. So in the left hand, we have five on E, three, G, one, middle C. In the right hand, we have one on E, two on G, five on high C. And here the chord is inverted once more into second inversion, so G is now on bottom. So left hand finger five G, two C, one E. And in the right hand, we have finger one on G, finger three C, and finger five on E. Our C chord inversion will start with the right hand at middle C and we'll begin with a root position chord, which is C, E, G. Three notes and they're all stacked a third apart. So C to E is a third or a skip and E to G is a third or a skip. And so when a chord is in root position where each tone is a third apart, then the bottom tone is the tone that names it, or the root note, so it's C. So an inversion is where we're just rearranging the notes of that chord. So from root position, I will take my lowest note, C, move it up an octave. So I'm retaining the E and the G below, and just putting the root note, or C, above. So the same three tones, C, E, G, just rearranged. So in a, with a first inversion chord, you have an interval of a third between the bottom and middle tone, and then a fourth between the middle and top. So if you see any chord that's in um, this position, where you have a third on bottom and then a fourth above it, you, you know that the root note's always on top and that it's a first inversion chord. So I'm playing right here a G first inversion chord. So first inversions always have that interval formula, a third on bottom, um, a fourth on top. So my root note C is on top. Okay, I'm going to invert it again. So again, it's the lowest tone that I'm gonna move up an octave. So that E, I move up an octave to here. So I'm keeping the G and the C in place, putting the E on top. Same three tones, C, E, rearranged. So now I have an interval of a fourth on bottom and then a third on top. And so that means I'm in second inversion and that my root note can be found in the middle. There's my C found in the middle. So if I invert it again, take my lowest tone, in this case the G, move it up an octave, then I'm right back to a root position chord because they're all a third apart and my root note is on bottom, C. So again, we had C, E, G. Move the C up an octave. Now E, G, C. Move the E up an octave. G, C, E. Move the G up an octave, and I'm back to my root C, E, G chord. So next we need to make sure we have the right fingering in the right hand. So for root position chord, right hand should always play 
one, three, five. The first inversion should always be played with one, two, five. So make sure two, not three, is in the middle. Finger two. My second inversion chord is always one, three, five. So finger three in the middle this time, and then back to my root, one, three, five. So again, right hand, your first inversion, make sure you have finger two in the middle, and your second inversion, make sure you have finger three in the middle. So the left hand, it's the same exact chords, just in the bass clef. So I have my root position with my root note C on bottom, first inversion with root note C on top, second inversion, root note C in the middle, and then that brings me up to my root position chord. So left hand fingering is what's different from the right hand uh, with the first inversion and second inversion chords. So in the root position, both hands have one, three, five on that chord. So it makes your left hand five, three, one. But when you get to the first inversion, left hand should have finger three in the middle. Second inversion, left hand should have finger two, and then you're back to root position. So once you've practiced that hand separately, check, make sure your fingering's correct, then put it together. So again, root position, fingers one, three, five in both hands. When you get to first inversions, um, the ones and fives are on the edges, so that's easy. So in the middle on the Gs, make sure left hand has finger three on G, right hand has finger two on G. When you get up to second inversion, again, it's easy because one and five are on the edges. So make sure left hand has finger two in the middle, right hand has finger three. And then you take it back up. And the reason for this strict fingering is that it just, it's most natural for your hand shape. And it just makes um, for better piano technique as you play these chords. So we have and once you've practiced those inversions and then taking it back up to the root position, try it down and up the keyboard over and over slowly, checking your fingering, your hand shape, dribble it slowly and over time it'll feel really natural. And it's fun to play with. It sounds pretty. Thank you for joining me today. Check out my lesson on Edvard Grieg's Morning Mood as the piano arrangement I wrote of that piece uses chord inversions. Have a great day, happy practicing, and I'll see you at the next lesson.